Support your Tucson Sirachians this season in the United Championship League and pick up a shirt today. What's good, YouTube? That 92 you're back again on once again. And today, people, today I am your coach of the Tucson Sirachians in the United Championship League, the UCL, and we are here for our week two team preparation. This week we are going up against Sensei Nexus himself. I'm Nexus, coach of the Pittsburgh Pichus, and I'm very, very excited. I'm so nervous for this. We gotta bounce back. We uh, unfortunately started the season with an L last week against the St. Louis Ramparts, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm not worried about it. I, I have confidence this week, but I'm also very, very nervous. I mean, it's Nexus. You know he's good, but it's at the same time, it's Nexus. You know we're gonna have a blast. So if you guys are hyped for some UCL team building, if you're hyped for week two, and of course, if you're a proud supporter of the Tucson Terrakions, make sure you smash the like button down below for us because you already know your support is greatly appreciated now we are here for week two team building i need to pull up the pittsburgh pichu's draft because they have a very very scary draft indeed their ou draft picks are megalopony zapdos and azumarill we saw last week nexus was able to completely annihilate jay and the carolina kildios with the belly jump sweep azumarill so that's going to be a, a a thought and it's going it's to be a presence in our mind this time. Uh, his UU picks are the Monster High Dragon, my second favorite Pokemon. Uh, Fortress, which uh, I feel like they're definitely going to bring considering we have Titania. Uh, Darmanitan, uh, and wait, no, yeah, that's all the UU picks. I was going to say, what the hell? Because their first RU pick threw me off. It has Hoopa. I forget that Hoopa's RU. I thought it was UU, but Hoopa is their first RU pick, then Slow King, then Verizion. Then their NU picks are Lantern, Pyloswine, and Kecleon. So, very, very nerve-wracking indeed to say the least. Now, this week, we did team build with Joey, coach of the Bronx Bear Ticks, because we don't battle Joey until, I think, the very last week, week 15 or something like that. And, uh, obviously, we normally team build with Nexus, but we can't team build with Nexus if we're going to be battling him. So, we went to Joey for team building, and team building with Joey is always so enlightening. You go, and it's just, there's so many things that you never even think about, you never even consider. And it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, it's little gems of information that I never end up forgetting. So, it's always great team building with Joey. And, it, you know, to be 100% honest, it's always great team building with someone who's more... Uh, experience more knowledgeable in Pokemon because yeah I get a lot of shit for like taking forever to choose moves and I get a lot of shit for uh, not knowing this or not or forgetting about this in Pokemon but it's it's all a learning process like I, I'll break the fourth wall right now I'll break the fourth wall there are times when like there are coaches that are team building together right because you, you guys know we're all friends and we team build together and whatnot and there are times where I'll sit in on a team building just to listen like, it won't even be for my match. It won't even be me preparing for anyone. I'll just listen because you pick up on little things and you'll remember, oh, this mon gets this move or this mon can take this hit or do that. And it's all just, I just, just want to be like a big Wi-Fi sponge. And I, I don't know, I don't do enough Wi-Fi as it is. But still, it's, it's so much fun team building with people like Nexus and Joey and others. So, I don't know. Either way, Joey did assist us this week and he opened our eyes to a few different possibilities that our team has against the Pittsburgh Pichu. So, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, our team this time, up, of course, up first, we have Titania, our Mega Gardevoir. Now, uh, we decided to make her timid. 248 special attack, 248 speed, and 12 in defense. Now, we speed crept uh, this uh, Mega Gardevoir uh, because who was the mom we were worried about outspeeding? I think it's, it was a was it a defensive Zapdos we were worried about outspeeding or Hydreigon. Uh, I think that's what it was uh, because Hydreigon's base speed is like 95 or 96 or something like that. Uh, we can actually just look it up right now. Hydreigon's base speed, uh, I know it's not as fast as Mega Gardevoir. Because Mega Gardevoir is base 100. Hydreigon is base 98. So, what we did was we speed crept this Gardevoir so that it outspeeds a max speed Hydreigon. Now, of course, if he ends up running a Scarf Hydreigon, then we're not going to outspeed, obviously. But, we put just enough speed EVs to outspeed a max speed Hydreigon and put the rest into defense so we can help tank hits because we don't need to go any faster than that. And everyone else on uh, the Pittsburgh Pichu's team, we relatively outspeed. Uh, we thought our squad was slow. The Pittsburgh Pichu's is kind of slow as well. Aside from their Mega, uh, a lot of their Mons are actually kind of not too speedy, to be honest. So we outspeed, I think, everyone on the squad apart from the Megalopony 
uh, barring choice scarf uses as well once we mega evolve we're rocking hyper voice obviously to hit everything shadow ball is there for the slow king uh, actually i think we counted hyper voice still does more but shadow ball is there for the hoopa shadow ball actually okos the hoopa at any range it does like a min like 104 percent or something like that so it okos hoopa if he wants to bring it uh the hp fire is there so obviously we can touch the fortress like i said fortress thing is going to be a big issue a big problem uh, i think he's definitely going to want to bring it uh knowing that we only have britannia the empoleon to get rid of hazards uh, so I think it's definitely going to be a, a, a presence he's going to bring, and plus it kind of sort of slows down and stops uh, Titania here. If you ever want to click Hyper Voice, he can just send in uh, Fortress, he can click Gyro Ball and hurt us as well. So with the idea of HP Fire there, we're good to go. And honestly, HP Fire wasn't that hard to come up with because when it comes to uh, the Pittsburgh Pichu's team, Hyper Voice and Shadow Ball, Hyper Voice honestly just takes care of so many things. I've said it last week in last week's team prep that... You know, this was the reason that I drafted Mega Gardevoir because Hyper Voice Fairy Typing is so scary in 6th Gen. And to have one of the best, uh, arguably one of the best Fairy Types on our squad in Mega Gardevoir, you can click Hyper Voice and almost nothing wants to come in on it. Obviously, there are going to be those people, uh, there's, there's like Agron, Steel Types and whatnot. Uh, but still, even like, like you guys saw it last season, Mega Metagross came in and still took 50% from a Hyper Voice. So, between high damage from Hyper Voice towards the Fortress, if it decides to swap out, and HP Fire, we should be able to handle it perfectly fine. And like I said, there weren't too many moves that we really needed to, like, apply to Gardevoir, to Titania this week. You know, Hyper Voice was a given, Shadow Ball was there for the Hoopa, HP Fire is there for the, uh... Uh, fortress and like I said hyper voice takes care of everything else So the last move was kind of just up in the air like what do we do and Joey suggested healing wish now If you don't know what healing wish does it's similar to lunar dance the infamous lunar dance from last year's match against the Duran Uh but it's similar to that in the sense that the Tanya in turn faints and fully heals the HP of Amon and uh does it heal PP? I don't think it heals PP. I think it just heals uh, HP and status ailments. So that allows us to play a little more recklessly with a few other members of our squad. I know you guys see Pearl uh, there as well. So that allows us to play a little more recklessly. If it ever comes to a point where Titan just isn't needed in a situation or it's just not beneficial for us to try and save her and keep her around, if we outspeed, which we do most members on the Pittsburgh Pichu squad, we can just click Healing Wish and pass it right out to someone else. And the other good part about this that Joey pointed out is that Healing Wish, if you go first with it, uh, the Mon faints. And uh, I think I think the way he explained it is I don't know if the mon, if your other Mon comes in immediately or not, but it counts as your Pokemon fainting, so your opponent's move fails. So it, that's I, I like that about that. So that when we go first, we can use Healing Wish. Uh, Titania will faint, and we can bring someone else in pretty much free and get full HP and heal any status issues they might have. So Titania is going to be I think I feel like she's going to be a major key in this puzzle. Never play yourself. Major key, <laughs> another one. She's gonna be a major key in uh, this battle. It's definitely gonna be interesting to see how we end up playing with her. The next mod that we're gonna bring to the squad is Joey Galaxy, our Thunderous Therian. Now we decided to go ahead and slap a Choice Scarf on it because with it being Scarf, we outspeed everybody on the Pittsburgh Pichu's team. There is nothing that Num Nexus can do that will outspeed us. I'm pretty sure Thunderous's base speed is 101. Uh, what is Megalopony's base speed? I know I keep googling it when I'm on showdown, I should just look it up, but I'm just so used to using uh, Bubblepedia like this. Uh, Mega Lopunny's base speed is 135, and obviously you can't scarf a Mega, so we automatically outspeed everything on the Pittsburgh Pichu's team. There's no amount of speed investments you can apply to any of their mons, or choice scarves to apply to any of their mons that will allow them to outspeed us. Uh, so, knowing that we have that offensive presence with such a hard-hitting mon, base uh, one, 145 special attack, you know, that's, that's nothing to laugh at, base 145 special attack, uh, what was the calc that we ran, what was the calc that we ran, I think it was, uh, against Zapdos, uh, even against a special defense of Zapdos, Thunderbolt still does like 40%, which is crazy, because if on the off chance we do get Stealth Rocks up, that's, that's a 2 co immediately like that's that's a lot of damage joey galaxy hits so very very hard of course we have volt absorb uh we decided to run tim in nature 252 speed 8 i mean 20 can't even speak 252 in speed 248 in special attack and 8 in defense of course we're running thunderbolt for stab uh that was an idea i was trying to decide whether to run thunderbolt or bolt switch because originally in this team building we decided we were going to bring 30 minutes the Rotom Heat, but then we also decided when we looked at things that 
Uh, maybe Rotom doesn't exactly fit this team comp for the Pittsburgh Pichu, so we decided against adding Rotom Heat, but during the process, we were deciding, should we run Thunderbolt, should we run Bolt Switch, you know, what options do we have, and we decided to go Thunderbolt, just all offense, and slap U-Turn on it instead. And again, this is back when we were building with the idea of Bolt Turn with Rotom Heat, with Bolt Switch, and then Joey Galaxy with U-Turn. Um, the re main reason that we decided to keep U-Turn and Thunderbolt as opposed to Bolt Switch is because of the presence of the, uh, I almost said Hapalda on the Pilot Swine. So that would block Joey Galaxy from being able to Bolt Switch out. So we can still run Thunderbolt and be okay and be in a decent position and still have the Switch Initiative with U-Turn. But we have Thunderbolt, Focus Blast, Hidden Power Flying, and U-Turn. Hidden Power Flying there, obviously, because that's the best stab move that he gets uh, when it comes to flying typing. U-Turn to give us that initiative. Focus Blast is there for Mons like Lopany, which doesn't really make a difference. Thunderbolt will do just as much. Uh, but it's also there for uh, High Dragon. It's there for High Dragon uh, and the and the Pilot Swine, and it gives us an option of something to hit the Lantern with. And if you want to be that guy, catch me on too, but Thunderbolt would do the job. Uh, but it gives us an option of something to hit the Lantern with, because Hidden Power Flying obviously would be resisted, and if it's Bolt Absorb, then we can't touch it with Thunderbolt. If it's not, if it decides to be Water Absorb, then... Swag! <laughs> We're cooking that fish today! Hot <laughs> damn! So Joey Galaxy is the next mod to join the squad. Up next, she's back home! She's back home! Ladies and gentlemen, Cindy! <gasps> Woo! Cindy is home! And we are so excited and so happy to have her on the squad. Now, I don't know, to the best of my knowledge, if Nexus is aware of the trade of Cindy. Now, I think... I'm pretty sure he is because in the UCL chat that we have, the, the trade was posted, it went out on Twitter, I uploaded a video about it, so I'm going to assume that he does know about it because I think he told me, uh, I think he told me that he team built on Sunday and Sunday morning is when Cindy was drafted, I'm not 100% sure, I don't, I'm not 100% sure, drafted or uh, traded, so I'm not 100% sure if he knows that we have Cindy or not, if he does, great I'm, I'm sure he planned for it and i'm sure that verizon will be ready willing and waiting but uh, if he doesn't then that'll be in our favor that's not our fault either that's not our fault either that's uh nexus's fault for not keeping up on things but i'm pretty sure he knows that we have cindy but cindy is here uh she is fresh off the trade block from the south beach slow kings uh, we have her in this match. She's honestly one of our win conditions. We need to make sure that Cindy stands tall and proud in her first week back with the Tucson Terrakions because she does wall a lot of Nexus's mods. A lot of the Pittsburgh Pichus get walled by uh, Cindy here. So, of course, we have Leftovers Storm Drain as well to help deal with the Azumarill. Uh, if the Azumarill ends up being banded or set up uh, by any means, whether it's uh, Belly Drum or whatever, then Play Rough is definitely going to deal a lot of damage to us. Uh, we are relaxed nature, up defense, minus speed, 252 HP, full HP, 148 defense, and 108 special defense. Now, the reason that we did that, the reason that we did that is so that we can be a nice defensive wall for a few different mons on Nexus's team. The only mon that we really seriously have to worry about would be the Verizion. Obviously, there's nothing we can do in that situation against Verizion. Leaf Blade, Oko's, I think even if we have plus six curse, plus six curse is the only way we're living, and even then, Leaf Blade still does like 40%, so we really don't have too many options against Verizon. So, Verizon shows up it's time for us to turn and run and that would suck if you got a free swords dance up or something like that because that that would just be really really bad but still uh the reason that we uh made our ev spread like this is we can take a high jump kick from uh 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 megalopony i think at max it does like 40 something percent uh we can take a high jump kick from megalopony waterfall right back or earthquake right back we'll do a shit ton of damage to the megalopony uh well I'm, I'm all over the place with my explanation of Cindy. That's that's how much work she puts in right now. We decided. Let me let me let me just take a step back. No 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 no. We decided to run a curse set on Cindy this time around. Um, originally, I wanted to run Sledge Wave on Cindy for the Azumarill because the idea of Super Power or Play Rough was there, and that was going to do a lot of damage. But obviously, the Azumarill can't touch us if it has Waterfall or Aqua Jet because of Storm Drain. But Joey brought up the idea of curse, and the curse set actually was like in the back of my head when I started running Calcs, and I was like, I could maybe live it if I had a curse. Uh, but we decided to run curse because uh, there are a few mons that Nexus may potentially bring that we can actually begin to set up on. I'm pretty sure uh, we ran the damage Calcs. Uh, if it comes to High Jump Kick, I think we're safe to click curse. Uh, I have to run the Calc again. Uh, when it comes to uh, Zapdos, this is the big thing when it comes to a Zapdos. Since we have both Cindy and Joey Galaxy, he can't run an HP that's going to work for both of them. Because uh, when it comes to 5th and 6th gen Zapdos, I think 5th gen Zapdos ran HP Grass because he UU for Swampert. 
uh, in Quagsire, and then 6th Gen, since now it's an OU, it runs HP Ice for Monsic Landorus and Garchomp. Uh, so, the idea is, either he runs HP Ice for our Thunderous, or he runs HP Grass for our Gastrodon, and we'll be able to try and, uh, bait it out and see what ends up happening, but, uh, when it comes to that, if he doesn't have HP Grass, then he 100% can't touch us with Zapdos, and that gives us a free chance to curse up. Uh, when it comes to, uh, Hydreigon, the reason that we have the Special Defense Investments is so that we can take a Life Orb, uh, I don't remember what the calc for choice specs, but it's so that we can take a Draco Meteor from uh, Hydreigon. I think it does like 60% max or something like that, 60 or 65% max, uh, but whenever it's Cindy versus Hydreigon, we're, we, we need to click Recover, because that'll give him the special attack drop, and then we can get all that HP back, and we can continue to set up and do what we want to do. It just sucks that we can't hit it with Earthquake, but then we just have to hope and pray after we get the curses up and we recover off that damage, we can just body it with Waterfall at that point. Uh, so when it comes to a mod like Darmanitan, we can safely eat a Flare Blitz. I think if it's an adamant banded Flare Blitz, it's doing over half. So that's a very, very scary thing indeed. But again, Waterfall uh, Oko's at Darmanitan, especially after recoil damage, so we don't have to worry too much about it. Uh, Hoopa and Slowking are kind of like wishy-washy. I think when it comes to a stall battle between Cindy and Slowking, Cindy wins because of the reliable recovery. And on top of that, uh, he can set up Calm Minds all he wants, but we, again, if he sets up Calm Mind, we set up a Curse. If he sets up Calm Mind, we set up a Curse. And eventually, our attack stat's gonna be sky high, and an EQ will just tear that Slowking apart. Uh, like I said, Verizion, can't really do much against that. The, uh... Lantern, we don't have to worry about either when it comes to setting up because either Lantern is going to toxic us and we click Earthquake, and Lantern is gone. So even if he wants to run a Water Absorb, we can't touch it with a potential Skull, which we don't run, uh, or a Waterfall, uh, we can still EQ and get that Lantern out of here. And then Pilot Swine, obviously we don't have to worry about that with Waterfall, and the Kecleon is again. So like I said, Cindy walls and handles so many Mons on... Uh, the Pittsburgh Pichu squad that it, it'll be interesting we definitely need to try and keep Cindy alive as long as we can because if we can set up with a few curses we have the potential to stand tall as that wall and take out Mons that's what, that's what I'm really really hoping for so we'll see what ends up happening again not on wood I hope nothing happens moving on down the lineup next we have another defensive Mon on the squad we have Nutcracker our chestnut uh, nice and impish nature 252 HP 4 in attack 188 in defense 4 in special defense and 60 in speed now we just to speed creep this chestnut to outspeed a I think it was another thing to outspeed a defensive Zapdos and Joey made some like futuristic uh, Oracle plays with this so the idea behind this 60 points in speed is to outspeed what Nexus may think we're going to run on our chestnut with his Azumarill that makes sense so the idea is Nexus thinks that we're going to run a traditional defensive uh, chestnut, which has no speed investments. So he's going to give his Azumarill just enough speed investments to go ahead and outspeed our chestnut because I think Azumarill's base speed is like 55 or something like that, or 45, and chestnut is base like 65. So if we had no speed investments and he had like a Jolly or uh, uh, an adamant max speed zoom or whatever, whatever he invested into it would be just enough to speed creep and outspeed our defensive chestnut. Now we have speed crept it just enough to outspeed what he would think we're going to run. So Hopefully, with all of that mindfuckery, we can outspeed Nexus's Azumarill and not have to worry about it. And originally, I was gonna end up uh, with the idea of running. Uh, 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 seed bomb instead of wood hammer, but Joey was like, No, if you're gonna go in, go in, do as much damage as you can because it's the difference between Okoing Azumarill and not Okoing Azumarill. I think there was another mod on the squad, uh, Slow King, and uh. Was it just the Slow King? I can't remember. Uh, but it was a, it was a difference between like Seed Bomb not actually finishing us off and Seed Bomb actually finishing us off. I mean, not, blah, blah, blah. Seed Bomb not finishing us off and Wood Hammer finishing them off. So originally, like I said, I wanted to run Seed Bomb, but it wouldn't do enough damage. So now Wood Hammer Oko's the Azumarill. It Oko's the Slow King. I think that was an issue with the Hoopa as well because obviously. Uh, I mean, we're not going to live a Psychic from the Hoopa, but we can take a Shadow Ball, obviously, because of Bulletproof, and Woodhammer Oko's the Hoopa at that point. We have Drain Punch for recovery, Leech Seed for recovery as well. If we ever send in a Chestnut and we feel safe, like a swap is going to happen, we can just click Leech Seed, and as long as it doesn't bring the Verizion or swap in the Verizion, we're good to go there. But I think Verizion gets Aerial Ace. I 
think Verizon gets Aerial Ace. I think that was the only issue that we were worried about when it came to Verizon is the presence of Aerial Ace. Uh, it does, in fact, get Aerial Ace, and it gets bounced too. He wants to be that guy. So if Nexus doesn't want to be walled by our Nutcracker, he would have to end up running Aerial Ace, which I would fully expect him to do. But besides the Verizon, uh, anyone on this team can get Leech Seated, so we don't have to worry about that. And then, of course, the last move is Spiky Shield, because that gives us a chance to scout and potentially do damage if we need to. So, Nutcracker is joining us once again. Again, knock on wood. Hopefully we don't make the mistake of sacking him off too quickly. That was, honestly, I feel like that was our, our worst play last week, was the fact that we ended up sacking off Nutcracker way too quickly against uh, the, uh, the St. Louis Rampartos, because Nutcracker is the one thing that we had that walled that extra drill. Even though extra drill did have Aerial Ace, Aerial Ace isn't enough to Oko. Aerial Ace would only done like 70% because it's not stab coming from him. So we could have lived that, drink punch the extra drill. That wouldn't Oko, that would get us all that HP back. So, again, what's done is done. Hindsight is 2020. We're bringing Nutcracker this week. Up next, we have Britannia, our Empoleon. Britannia is here to serve as our uh, special wall of sorts. It's kind of a mixed wall in a sense. I'm sure you see it as bold nature. Ups defense, lowers attack. Uh, 236 HP, 20 points in defense, and 244 into special defense. So we're here kind of sort of to soak up some special hits. If, if you've noticed, our team... Uh, we have a lot of physical walls with, with Cindy and Nutcracker, but at the same time, Cindy is built to take a Draco Meteor. Cindy is built uh, to, to deal with some of those special threats. Titania is especially defensive to begin with, and then uh, so here, so here, so is uh, Britannia as well, especially with those special defense investments. So we made it bold nature so that we can go ahead and uh, live a superpower from either the Azumarill or a superpower from the Hydreigon. And with that, we can uh, safely click a Stealth Rock if we wanted to. Uh, we could Defog Rocks away from our side if we needed to, or Spikes or anything else. Uh, but we decided to run Scald and Knock Off. Now, the biggest issue that we had here was the idea of what to run on this Britannia. Literally, Joey and I sat here for like 20 minutes discussing pros and cons of running different moves on uh, this Britannia. Because with this moveset, we can't especially touch the Zapdos too much. But it's one of those things where you have to weigh your pros and your cons. You know, what's more of a threat? What can we handle? Because at the end of the day, one mod can't handle everything on the opponent's team. Kind of like how Cindy can't do anything to Verizon, you know? So, to that extent, we decided to run Skull because it's arguably one of the best moves in the game. So, we can burn uh, the Mega Low Pony, we can burn the Zapdos if needed to, the Azumarill if you wanted to swap in on it. Uh, the same goes for Knock Off. We can knock off whatever item that the Azumarill might be holding. Uh, same goes for the Hydreigon. I know it's resisted, Skull's resisted. I think Knock Off's resisted too. I'm pretty sure Dark resisted. So, uh, but still, we can knock off a potential Choice Scarf that the Hydreigon might have, or a Life Orb, which would help even more with Cindy taking a Draco Meteor. Uh, we can burn the Mons, like I said, burn the Megalopony, burn the Azumarill, burn the uh, Hydreigon. We can knock off uh, potential leftovers on the uh, Fortress, Scald the Fortress to help whittle it down. Scald does crazy damage to our Manitan as well if he wants to try and hit us with superpower. Knock off 100,000 million percent obliterates Hoopa. There's no way Hoopa's living a knockoff. I think min damage is like 101, and that's with no attack investments from Embolion. So that's how frail Hoopa actually is with it being quite effective. Knock off tears through Slow King as well. Uh, Verizon we can't really do much to. Verizon again is going to be an issue because uh, I'm pretty sure it has justified. So if we click knock off and he predicts it, that's going to give it an attack boost and that's just a problem. That is just a problem. But even then, if he wants to try and go for close combat, Chopper Berry is there so we can hopefully eat up the hit and uh, uh, scald it in an attempt to get a burn at that point. Knock off is there for uh, the Lantern as well because if it ends up being water absorbed, then we can't do anything to it. But knock off will allow us to knock off its leftovers or anything it might have. Scald tears to the Empoleon. Not the Empoleon, what the hell? Skull tears through the uh, Piloswine, and we can handle the Kecleon too. So, Empoleon, hopefully, hopefully, this is the best moveset that we can come up with that'll be able to handle as many threats on the squad as possible. And like I said, the Chapel Barrier is there for Superpower Hydreigon, uh, the Verizion if we need to have the close combats, the Azumarill if it wants to go for a Superpower, or a High Jump Kick from the Lopony. That'll give us a chance to Scald it and get the burn off. So, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Now, our last mod on the squad was a toss up again. Uh, we were thinking about bringing Ambipom, again, as I mentioned, we were thinking about bringing Rotom Heat, but we decided on Pearl because Pearl, Dragonite, like, like last week, is such a huge offensive presence, such a huge threat, it's a wall breaker in and of itself, 
Uh, so Pearl of Dragonite will be joining us again this week, and we're running a similar spread to last week. 252 attack, 252 speed, foreign special defense, adamant choice, banded. We have the safety of the multi-scale, don't have to worry about Sandstorm this week, which again is another reason I'm pretty sure he's going to end up bringing the Fortress uh, to get those hazards up to break the multi-scale, but we decided to run choice banded, Dragon Claw for stab, extreme speed because banded e-speed does so much damage to everyone on the Pittsburgh Pichu's team, barring the Hoopa of course because it's a ghost typing. But uh, like a Bandit East here, I'm pretty sure does like almost 58, 60% to Azumarill. So if the Azumarill wants to try and set up, uh, if we can whittle it down enough to the point, uh, you know, hypothetical situation, we knock off its Citrus Berry and he goes for a Belly Drum. You know, E speed's enough to knock out the Azumarill and prevent a sweep. Uh, Fire Punch is there for the Fortress, of course, and the Verizion. We were, we were looked at uh, Aerial Ace and we decided that when it comes down to it, Fire Punch offers more coverage for the entire team. And I'm pretty sure I think uh, Bandit Fire Punch Okos, or it does like 98% or something like that to Verizon, it completely obliterates it. Uh, same with Thunder Punch. I'm pretty sure after Rocks, uh, Verizon goes down to Fire Punch and Azumarill goes down to Thunder Punch. So it's definitely going to be a huge presence on the squad. Thunder Punch there, of course, again for the uh, Slow King. It would only be an issue with the uh, Lantern. If he carries Volt Absorb, it would be an issue then. Uh, we'd have to Dragon Claw the Lantern or E-Speed the Lantern. And the only other issue that would be on the squad, uh, on the Pit Pittsburgh Pichu's team, that would uh, prove to be a problem for us would be the Pilot Swine. Because of course it gets Ice Shard. And if the multi is broken, then that's going to be a problem. <laughs> that's going to be a problem. Uh, but Fire Punch does a shit ton of damage. We can at least get enough... Uh, damage off on the pilot swine to maybe will it down with someone else so pearl is there to be our wall breaker we have our walls in cindy nutcracker britannia and a little bit in titania we have our offensive presence in titania joey galaxy who outspeeds everything and pearl as well who outspeeds everything with a bandit e-speed and touches everyone on the team besides the hoopla so it's very very good i'm very very optimistic in this team uh, again shout out to joey for assistance in the team building uh, area i learned so much every time we team build uh, the only issue that I have at this point is predicting a lead on Nexus's team because Nexus could very well decide he wants to lead with High Dragon because High Dragon gets U-turn. He could lead with Azumarill and decide he wants to try and play hyper offensive and Belly Drum turn one, expecting me to lead with uh, 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 Britannia uh, to set up Rocks or someone else. He could lead with uh, Megalopony, Mega Evolve, and Fake Out turn one, safely Fake Out because uh, before, if he doesn't know that we have Cindy, before we had Golurk. So, even with Golurk on our squad, he can still fake it out because Megalopony has Scrappy. So, I don't know. There's lots of different potential leads for uh, the Pittsburgh Pichus. Literally, his entire OU and UU squad, he can all lead with. Megalopony, he can lead with. Zapdos, he can lead with a Volt Switch out of. Azumarill, he can try and play Hyper Offensive with. Hydreigon, he can play Hyper Offensive with. Or just click U-Turn. Uh, Fortress, he can lead with because of Sturdy, he can leave anyone hit and set up rocks or anything else. Darmantan, he can lead with because if it's Scarfed, he can lead with it and try and U-Turn. It's just so many different options. I think our safest leads at this point are either Joey Galaxy or Pearl. They're very, very predictable. But my thing is, I don't want to leave with a Mon that puts us in a bad situation. I don't want to leave with a Mon that'll put us in a situation where we're like, oh fuck, he's gonna get a free Belly Drum, or oh fuck, he's gonna get a, a free whatever off on whoever he send in. So, that's the only downside. Based on who he brings, I might leave with Britannia to set up rocks. That would be very, very nice uh, to see. I don't know, it's just it's just very difficult to tell. We won't be able to make that decision until the battle actually begins. So, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It's just tricky, it's just very, very tricky indeed. Either way, I am, uh, nerves aside, excited for our battle. It will go live tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I know traditionally we get 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but those time slots are taken this week, and we like to play fairly here in the UCL. So tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, our battle, our week two battle will go live. And, uh, I, I know you guys are going to like the skit that's going to go beforehand, because Nexus and I are both fans of Naruto, so it's going to be pretty fucking hilarious. Uh, it's going to be pretty fucking hilarious indeed. <laughs> Anyways, let me know what you guys think of our squad for week two of UCL season two. Let us know any changes that you make. Let us know if you see anything that we may have forgotten or whatnot. And uh, yeah, hope you guys are as hyped and excited as I am. Make sure you scoop up your Tucson Terrakion's tees and hoodies. Last year we only had white, purple, and black available. Now we have red and blue available as well. So make sure you go and scoop one up before they're gone. Uh, last day to get one is July 29th. Link is in the description below. Go scoop it up and support your Tucson's Rackions. And of course, if you guys are a proud member of the Nappy Nation 
and your support in the Tucson track games, and your hype for UCL Season 2. Make sure you smash the like button down below for us. But with that, I'm going to get about. Thank y'all once again for your support, and thank you for checking the video. We out this bitch. Bye!